Okay, welcome to this video where we are going to focus on a three dimensional vector. Or maybe we are going to solve one of the questions based on three dimensional vectors. So, this question is based on a cube. So, the question goes like this, and the diagram is there, it is given. So, the question goes like this In the figure below, vector B and C are intersecting face diagonals of a cube, of a cube edge A. So by saying find the then the first one which is one numer Roman numeral by saying uh, component of vector d where d is equal to the cross product of b and c then they're saying the angle between vector b and vector c again they're saying the direction cosines of the body diagonal which is vector e so our, our diagram looks like this. All right. So we have this diagram which shows every vector. So since this is a cube, this actually means that all the sides have to be equal. The distance from here up there it has to be labeled as a. Even from here up there it has to be a. Again from here up to that side it has to be a. And also even here it has to be a so all the sides they are equal this means that since we've been given this one to be our diagonal the meaning of a diagonal actually the mean it moves from one corner to the other so in this case it is touching from the bottom corner up to the end uh, edge of the upper corner this actually means that once we want to find uh, the vector b how can we find the vector b we need to focus on each axis we have the z axis we have the x axis remember if this if this is the, uh, the x axis meaning that even this one is going to be my x axis if this is my y axis all these lines that are moving upwards they are going to be called y axis if this is my z automatically this is going to be z axis this one also is going to be my z axis now as the question says, we need to find the cross product of B and C for us to come up with vector D. They are saying we need to find the cross product of B and C for us to come up with vector C. So first of all, what you have to understand the most is you need to know how to come up with the components for each vector. Remember, this is three-dimensional vector, meaning that no need of us uh, trying to resolve the, the vector into its components now so this is the saying you have to find the product of vector c as well as vector uh, b so if you check this vector is lying in the air uh, what's this is lying in the z axis like i said to say if this is my line automatically this vector lies uh, in the uh, in the z axis so sorry it must lie in the in short this vector is not having any direction as well as vector c is not having any direction so what are we supposed to do for us to come up with uh, the cross product of vector b and c we have to move in this direction uh, i can either move this i go on that one and also i go in this direction that automatically is going to be my vector b cross so for me to come up with this same movement what am i supposed to focus on to what am i supposed to focus on to so what you're going to understand here you're going to understand something as follows okay so if you check clearly for you to come up with vector b how can you come up with vector b I'll just make this one move a bit so definitely what you're going to understand if you take vector b to be in this format you understand that this vector b which is at this given point it is going to have two different axes it will move in the x-axis and also it can move in the y-axis for it to reach at that given point i hope you still remember what you used to do by grade 12. same applies to vector c from here up that given point we can move in the z-axis and go back in the y-axis so since all these sides they are equal meaning that even here i'm going to have a and also there i'm going to have a so for you to come up with vector c it will be something like this now for vector c we're going to have something like this 
vector c we're going to have something like this this is my z axis which is where which is at this given point which is this one the y y component which is this one it has to be something like this meaning that for vector c for it to come up with vector c you can move in this direction and also go back up to reach at that given point same applies to this one for it to come up with vector b you need to move in the x-axis and then in the y-axis so what you're going to understand the most each vector is going to lack one component or rather one axis for this one is going to lack what we call the x component because it comprises of the y component as well as the x i mean the z component but this one is going to, to lack what we call the z component due to the fact that this is my x axis which is this part this straight line is my x axis and then this one is my y axis which is this line where there is a so that's how you can resolve this one uh, the same the same uh, vectors into their into their components for you to clearly understand how we are going to come up with a simple uh, calculations all right so these are the components for each vector we have vector d which is written as follows vector d is written as so since i say vector b is going to lack z axis meaning that here you're going to put what is zero k why because it is lacking z axis if you didn't look with uh look at the diagram clearly you can get back pause the video try to get back and check what is written there same applies to vector c vector c automatically is, uh, is lacking the x axis so i would just i'd like to, to get back a bit to this like i said for vector b for it to come up with vector b you have this component which is x component in this case is this one which is here then you also have the y component which is somewhere there but since we are not having the z axis in this case remember these are what we call di di diagonals these are diagonals so what you're going to do you say this one is going to have what zero for vector b for vector c if you get back to vector c what are you going to have you understand that it will be something like this having the z axis which is the last part a k then the the y axis which is a k so this one is lacking uh the x axis hence you have to write it like this now what will be the next thing now in this case all right so using what we call the method of grammar's rule uh, which is which normally applies even to two by two matrices or maybe two dimensional vectors it also applies but it's very rare but mainly you can apply it here where there is three by three uh, vectors so you understand that here we are having three dimensional matrix we have one two three one two three one two three how do we find the same um, the same determinants so what you're going to understand is this here we have three different components which are on top for you to come up with the determinant of this vector you have to do it as follows first of all you have to hide the first column secondly you're going to hide this upper row the numbers that haven't been hidden and the number which has been hidden twice you have to multiply the determinant of these four numbers by what has been hidden twice you do likewise to the middle part to likewise the middle part you hide like this so meaning that at the first part here what you are going to do is this you have to multiply i multiply by if you get back a bit like this you are going to understand that i is going to be hidden twice so since i has been hidden twice what are we going to do i will say i multiply by the determinant of these numbers how do we get the determinant here you say a multiplied by a you're going to get a squared minus a multiplied by zero which is zero and this becomes our first number which is at this given point you do likewise to the middle part by hiding this line and the row so you find that this zero that one this zero and that one they're going to be hidden i mean they're going to be unhidden then since we have negative j which has been hidden twice automatically you have to multiply this by this multiplied by that one which is a square minus zero the reason why we are, we, are, we are using a negative here is because we are following the principle of grammar's rule which is plus minus plus for the upper numbers then you come to this given part you hide this you also hide that given part so in this case a a zero a will be unhidden then you do like this you say this multiplied by that 
this multiply by that then you multiply the answer you're going to get by the factor or rather the component hidden twice so automatically vector d is going to be this one all right i'm happy you are following now how do we find the angle between b and vector c okay i have a simple statement here for you people so this statement goes like this we are saying between vector b and c for us to find the angle this means that the theta is what is dying between the two given vectors now what are we supposed to do automatically for us to find the angle is the what we can use we are going to use a dot product or scalar product which is this formula given here meaning that you have to find the dot product of these two vectors and also find their magnitude separate after doing that now you do what you have to replace everything and you are going to get this one so since we are having letters here how possible is it that you are going to get numbers meanwhile we are having letters it's very simple like very very simple okay so firstly we need to find we need to find the magnitude of each vector and their dot product so we have vector b and vector c which is a dot product in this case how can we get the dot product of these vectors remember we said you have to be multiplying the corresponding components so in this case we are going to have this component and zero which is lacking on the part of vector c by the way the first vector here has to be equivalent to the first vector there so this is going to be my second vector so you say the vector the, uh, the vector given by this and that one you multiply them as follows so if i say a multiplied by that one automatically i'll get zero again if i multiply this by that one i'll get a square which is in the middle the reason why we're multiplying corresponding is very simple we are autom automatically using a simple concept that is giving us a notice i'll give you down there so if you multiply you find that vector b and c their dot product is going to be what a square why do we do it like this there is a note here you have to take note that i dot i has to be equal to j dot j which has to be equal to k dot k equal to one if we multiply the opposite of them components are going to get zero that's why previously on the previous page i gave you something which was uh, multiplying the corresponding for us to get the exact answers minus getting zeros once you multiply with the opposite okay so after that what are we supposed to do next okay so the next thing that we're likely to do is to find the magnitude for the vector b as well as vector c how are we going to get their magnitude we know that vector c i mean vector b is lacking one of the components which is that component hence you are going to have x square which is a in this case y square which is a in that case then b i mean vector i mean the remaining component which is z is lacking hence you have to square this and this one you are going to get this one if you continue you can separate these by multiplying them like this you say square root of 2 multiplied by square root of a square automatically this part this is going to be equal to a that's why here we are able to find our answer of the magnitude of b as a root of 2 same applies even to this one it is lacking one of the components hence it will only have a square plus b square and you'll be able to do it to get the exact answer as the root of 2a the reason why i'm saying it is lacking one of the components if you get back a bit to this definitely you're going to understand that vector b is lacking one of the components which is z component then vector c is lacking the x component reason being i area showed you a simple illustration for these two two uh, diagrams given these two two diagrams i showed you these two two diagrams to illustrate that one of the component is going i mean one of the vectors is going to lack a component like for this one which is vector b is backing one of the components which is what the z component because we only moved in the x axis and go to y axis same applies to this one we are moving in the z axis you get back to the y axis like that all right so getting back to the formula the formula goes like this now you say cos theta has to be equal to the dot product of b and c divided by the magnitude of b and c i think i area 
showed you the, the formula again for this, why we're doing it like this. The formula which I gave you is this one. Now, if we divide throughout by the magnitude of B and C, you understand that it has to take us to this given part. So definitely, since it gives us this, this is the best formula we can follow for us to find the, um, what we call the angle. And you replace the magnitude for this one. I remember we found the magnitude for that one as A square. Where is it? The magnitude def definitely it has to be, sorry, the dot product has to be this one. And then the magnitude of it, we are from finding which is what? A square root of 2 for it. So this one is the, mag I mean, this has to be the magnitude of vector C and this one the magnitude of vector B. Definitely what you are going to do, you are going to multiply this magnitude and that one. Then you have to know the answer that you are going to do at him, that you are going to get. If you multiply this by that, what answer are you going to get? Square root of 2 multiplied by square root of 2 automatically, we are going to get what we call 2 as our answer. And then A and A, they are going to multiply each other and it has to give us something as follows. So this is what it gives us. Automatically, you find that if you multiply it like that, you are going to get 2A square and on top we are having what? We are having A square. So this A square and that A square are going to be cancelled. Hence, we are going to end up with 1 over 2. Definitely, this becomes 1 over 2 cos inverse and you'll be able to reach on the final answer as that. We had letters and now we've managed to come up with a number which is 60 degrees. The angle between vector C and vector B has to be 60 degrees. Okay, so getting back to the diagram, the vector diagonal of the, of the cube has to be vector E. And how is it going to look like? This is my diagram. So this vector is moving from here up to that corner. How can you move in this case? You are going to understand that you can move in whichever way. You can either move in Y, you go in X, and you come back in Z axis. Or you can move in Z, X, and you go back to what? To Y axis. So meaning that this vector, which is the diagonal vector, it is going to have all the three different um, components. It will have all the three different components. And it has to be written like this one. It has to be A, I, plus A, J, and A, K. So this actually means that if it is having all the three components, definitely all the angles that are going to be equal with respect to each axis. And how are we going to find the angle for the same vector with respect to every axis? In this case, since it has the same numbers like this one. If you, if you attended yesterday's lesson, you'll be able to relate to say, we had different angles due to the fact that we had different numbers here. So since these numbers are the same, automatically their angles are going to be equal. Reason being, every component is divided by what we call the resultant amongst themselves. Probably, this shows that cosine of alpha is going to be equal to cosine of beta has to be equal to cosine of gamma, which is going to be equal to every component which is a for each vector if you were to check back to what i just uh, i'm from showing you people so if you check clearly you are going to understand that this one it is showing that vector e is having all the same components because this is a cube then these numbers are going to be equal so for us, for us to come up with um, what we call the magnitude for this one we are going to use the formula for the three by three or rather three dimensional vector which has to be r is equal to, or maybe E, the magnitude has to be equal to X square, Y square plus Z square. Then you replace their respective components and you'll be able to reach on the answer as this one. If you reduce this answer, you'll be able to get this one like we did in the previous two uh, magnitudes for vector C and vector B. Now, getting back to this formula, which is here, you'll be able to replace what there is magnitude by its magnitude which is this one and you'll be able to find the angle for each vector you can just pick whichever vector you can either pick this that one you are going to get the same answers and now how are the answers going to be okay so definitely you are going to understand that the answers are going to be like this you put it here like your a then this one you're going to write it down so this and this will be cancelled and you come up with cos alpha has to be called this so alpha has to be called cosine cos inverse of 1 over root of 3. 
if you punch this on your calculator definitely it must give you an answer of 54.7 degrees for every component or rather for every axis with respect to the resultant which is e this is the end of this simple question that we are from solving i know a good number of people are going to be finding a lot of challenges don't worry we have uploaded it on our youtube channel follow our facebook page like every video from our youtube channel and you you, you have to subscribe turn on the notification bell for you to reach uh, for you to be reached out in every time whenever we, uh, whenever we upload a new video thank you for watching